personal injury court. This is the matter of Simmons versus Hargrove. Mr. and Mrs. Simmons, uh, I've read the materials that you all have submitted to this court. It appears you all are suing Mr. Hargrove for injuries that you sustained when you went down a water slide at his park. Uh, you're asking this court to award you $200,000 in past medical expenses and $1.8 million for pain and suffering for a total of $2 million. Is that correct? Yes, yes Your Honor. Honor. All right, Mr. Hargrove, your response to this is he uh, got what he paid for in terms of going down a water slide. This is not your fault. He assumed the risk. Yes, Your Honor. All right, now let's get into the legal sauce. Tell me how we got here, Mr. Simmons. Well, I'm a family man, as you can see. I went to the water park with my wife and my son, and we had planned this for a while. How old was your son? Oh, he's four. So you're a real dad. Yo, yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay. And I'm a water park enthusiast. Uh, I'm known around, they call me Big Sexy. Okay. So... <laughs> Why this park this day? Well, the park actually had a new attraction called the Devil's Descent. Okay. Um, it's one of the highest slides in the state, and I, I had to go ahead and make sure that I could get on, especially with my son being afraid of heights. Heights make me nervous. I did this with my own son, who's uh, now 28, trying to prove to him that I could do it, but I didn't end up the way you did. It was the worst day. Now, is this what you, uh, what you being prepared on the day of the incident to go down the slide, is that you? Yes, sir. That's big sexy. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And you look pretty happy there. Like, you're, you're excited and ready to have a good time with your wife and son. I was. Was your little boy excited? Oh, he was, he was excited. He was running around the park. I was trying to chase him and everything, trying to keep up with him. Uh, he's my everything, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Hargrove, tell me about your park. Um, well, this park has been in my family for three generations. Okay. Uh, my grandfather started it 32 years ago, and then he passed it down to my father. I have been running it for the last three years. We get over seven million visitors a year now. That's a lot of folks. That's absolutely a lot of folks. And with that being said, with those seven million a year, we have no injuries. Now, you, you've got this ride. Uh, what's, what's the slide called? It's the Devil's Descent. It's a brand new ride. It's the new attraction. It's why everybody's coming to get a ride on that Devil's Descent. Mr. Simmons, today you don't look as excited as you seem to be in that picture when you were about to ride the slide. Tell me how this thing happened. I go to get on the ride. It's actually about a 25-minute wait. Okay. So I have my wife and my son stay at the bottom. That kind of builds the excitement, though, right? Oh, it does. And I know he's excited. I see him down there jumping and waving, and, and I know I'm going to make him proud when I go down this slide. Now, Mr. Simmons, you submitted a few documents to the court. Uh, one is a picture of the slide. I, I want you, if you can, take your time, but I want you, and Sheriff Matt, if you'll help him get over to the uh, plasma, I want you to explain exactly how this happened, because I've never been on this slide, and frankly, don't uh, care to get on it. It's too high for me. Yes, Your Honor. Come on, cross over. Now, is this the slide that you uh, went down? Yes, Your Honor. It's about 150 feet up. <laughs> so when you get at the top, you notice that you're, you're very high up. Okay. It's immediate. Up here, everything was fine. Next thing I know, I get to this second slide right here, the second bump, and that's where I, I was in the air. You went airborne? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I felt like I didn't touch back down till about here, and that was scary, because about here is where I, I noticed I had to be going maybe 60, 70 miles an hour. Okay. I'm flying. When I come down here, I feel it just continue, and I get to the water. Instead of splashing in, it just kind of skipped across the top here. Like, like a stone on a pond? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Exactly. It was the most traumatic feeling of my life. Then I continued across, immediately felt pain as I landed on the concrete, and then I slammed into the retaining wall. I was thinking, oh, God, I'm, I'm going to die. Yes, sir. It was the most terrifying experience of my entire life. Yes, sir. You may return to the podium. Thank you. Now, Mrs. Simmons, I've been talking like you're not in the room, but I'm watching your face. What was this like for you? You're standing there with your son. To go from that and seeing him at the top all bubbly to now wondering if your husband's going to make it, wondering if your son's going to have a father, that was a, a drastic change. You know, to see your husband flying into... Did he see his dad hit the wall? He did. And what was his reaction? He's traumatized, crying. 
crying in tears. In so tears. you're trying to comfort him. Exactly. You're frightened about your husband. You're scared. Exactly. Yes. Pandemonium. Mr. Hargrove, are you a family man? I am a family man. Yes. Uh, sir. You you have babies. Uh, absolutely. This kind of thing changes a marriage, uh, changes a lot of things that are meaningful. True. And I truly sympathize with him. But at the same time, it, it is not the fault of our company. I wish he just would have paid attention to all the warnings that were there ahead of time. We could have really, you know, resolved the whole issue. Well, how's he to know that? Okay, so we have signs. When you walk into the park, the sign says, right at your own risk. That's the uh, entrance to your park? Yes, sir. Was that posted the day that Mr. and Mrs. Simmons and their little boy came into the park? That it, yes, sir. It's, po it's posted every day. Now, did you see that sign? Did either of you see that sign? No, no Your Honor. I mean, it's, it's kind of right there. Why wouldn't you see the sign? Like he said, they have over 7 million people come during the summer. The park was at full capacity. You did walk in that entrance, though. I mean, yes, I walked in actually to the left. That, and that is a at big sign. sign, though, right? I mean, they, they make it big like that so 7 million people can see it. Your Honor, right? it, that's not the only place it is. That is at the beginning, at the entrance, but we have the signs pasted all over the park. He's doing the bare he, minimum. He, he has the signs for all. the protocol, doing the bare minimum and not really caring about the people because you, you should have yeah. told us when we were buying the ticket. Mr. Simmons, I see uh, from the documents that you submitted to this court that you have $200,000 in medical expenses. Tell me about your injuries. I broke my neck when I collided into the wall. <sighs> It was probably the most excruciating pain. I still deal with this every day. I can't turn. I have limited vision. Uh, they had to do the fusion, and now I, I, I have to wear this brace. Yes, sir. You know, it, it makes everything tough, and this isn't my only injury. Now, you've got your arm up in this, this uh, sling. Tell, tell me about that. Yes, so while I took damage to my arm, I broke my collarbone. Okay. Now, we've got another x-ray. This circle shows a bone broken. Is that your clavicle? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. How has this and these injuries affected you being a dad? I feel like I'm not. I, I can't pick my son up. I see him and he comes in and he, he'll try to play and I can't because I'm just in excruciating pain. I mean, that's pretty bad, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I sympathize with him. I sympathize with his pain and his suffering. That's good to hear. But it's not our fault. He violated the weight policy. Well, I, don't, I don't see anything on here about a weight policy. How is it supposed to work? The weight policy just informs uh, all of our riders um, that if you're above a certain uh, weight, this is not the ride for you because you, it could cause you some type of issue. Now, Above a certain weight, what weight? Yeah, it depends I mean, and, on the ride. be careful, on, I'm a 235 pounds. Okay, on this ride particular, the, the weight is 300 pounds. Okay. Uh, Mr. Simmons is clearly over 300 pounds. How would he know about the 300 pound limit? We have a sign, we, we have a sign posted on the ride. You've submitted that sign to the court? Yeah, yes, sir. All right, let's take a look at it. The red circle says maximum weight 300 pounds. Yes, sir. Okay, and you expect that he would see that? Uh, yes, sir. Now, Mr. Simmons, I'm asking here uh, gently, how much do you weigh, sir? 365. And were you 365 thereabouts on the day that you rode this uh, Devil's Descent? Yes, Your Honor. Now, sitting here in this courtroom, this looks like it's plain as the day is long, that uh, 300 pounds or more, you shouldn't ride this ride. Did you see this sign? No, Your Honor. So you weren't paying attention again? The park is crowded. I mean, how can we see that? You know, you the, expect the, the excitement. We're just going in to have a good time. Your Nobody Honor, it's not crowded at the top of the, of the slide. There's only one person at a time. Well, you, you're reading my mind there, Mr. He, Hargrove. He, he, he's overweight, sir. He's fat. I'm sorry. He, he's, he's fat. Be respectful. We're not going to do that here. That is inappropriate. It is out of line. Yes, Your Honor. We're trying to get to the truth here. Yes, Your Honor. I understand, I understand. But it's not my fault that he's overweight. And it's not my fault that he didn't pay attention to the signs. We have them all over the park on each ride. I, I just noticed it on this picture right now. But you do have a responsibility to let us know. Like, you should Someone have a responsibility have to something. tell us to, to, to that he's overweight. Ma'am, ma'am, we did let you know. We put signs up. We don't have people walking around with microphones checking everybody. It's 7 million well, people you, there. Well, you should, because clearly it, it'll hurt someone if it's overweight. Other than the weight policy, we have two sets of inner tubes that's up there. The smaller inner tubes are for children. The bigger inner tubes are for the adults. Okay, this is the bigger inner tube. This is the inner tube for adults. It has less air in it, so it travels down at a slower rate. He chose to get on the smaller inner tube. How would he know? 
How would he know which is for whom? We're, we're not mind readers. Apparently, we're not Mr. Hargrove, this is important to you. Yes, right? it's important. And they are separated. They have some, the, the small ones are set to the side for children. Okay. It says kids, and the large ones are to the other side for adults. How do, how do they select the two? No, we have a lifeguard at the top. At all times? At all times. Okay. And you brought a witness uh, with you. Is this uh, your lifeguard? This is my lifeguard. Who was there that day? Miss uh, Annie Davis is your name. Yes, Your Would Honor. Would you stand up, please, and come to the podium? Yes, sir. When you saw him, did you have any thoughts or concerns about your safety rules? Yes, sir. I, I asked him if he was sure that he should be riding the ride, um, insinuating to him that I thought he may be over the weight limit. Well, why not just say to him, sir, this is a 300-pound weight limit. I don't know how much you weigh. I don't mean to embarrass you. But if you're over 300 pounds, you can't ride this ride. That, I won't be that embarrassed was my if concern. you're trying to save my life. That was my concern of embarrassing him or offending him. And I assume that he understood where I was going with that based on the nonverbal communication of what the eye contact. What would make you assume that? His eye contact with me and my, uh, and my um, designating the sign that I was sure that he saw. Uh, I was always taught you were supposed to make eye contact with everyone, so that didn't, that didn't mean anything. If you, if you felt like my life was in danger... Ms. Davis, when you see that he's going to ride the ride, did you try to stop him? Sir, I turned around and I noticed that he was using the kid size tube. So at that point, I assumed that he was okay with the weight limit and that he was affirming to me he was under it. And so I turned to replace the inner tube that he had grabbed, which is for a child size. So when he, adult size. when he reaches to grab the child's inner tube, you took that as uh, he's saying he's to you, confirmed that he's below I'm under 300 pounds. As a yes, professional, I feel like if you know that my life is on the line at your part, you, you should be able to say something. Like There's you, a lot of assuming. Again, when she, assume when she you said wait. to you, when she said I to you, are you sure you want to do this? And you looked at her and kind of nodded. She assumed so, that you so are under nod, the... She assumed is, that you are a, under a nod, the weight. So say, she reached to give you the correct... How many Two, words are in a nod? Got, she turned around, you were gone. How we know that's how many what you're doing? How's he supposed to You know didn't look at the sign. You didn't look at... You didn't look at... Let's have order in the court. Mrs. Simmons, let's go back. Your husband and you passed two signs and then disregarded... Two piles, one's big, one's small. That's the reason why you have people up there to help guide and tell you. If I'm grabbing the wrong tube, tell me. If I'm gonna hurt myself on this ride, tell he didn't me. Give but her chance. Chance. but she didn't, she didn't even chance. open her mouth. What's, a, what's eye contact? Mr. and Mrs. Simmons, Mr. Hargrove, I think I've heard enough. I'm ready to render my decision. This case has to fit under the legal framework of a personal injury case. There are basically three elements. Personal injury case is like a three-legged stool. If one of them is missing, then the stool fails and so does your case. You all have to prove that Mr. Hargrove and his employees were wrong, that their wrong cause, second leg, your injuries. Clearly, you were injured. Now, the evidence is not that simple in this case. The evidence in this case, you all went to the park for a good family outing, but it does not go without noticing things that are there to protect you. Mr. Hargrove was very specific in pointing out signs at the entrance and then on the ride, both that tell you warning, you do this at your own risk. Mr. Hargrove had a sign that had a weight limit on it. Now, both of those, you all have described, you basically walking by them and that troubles me. Then you get to the top and there are two sets of tubes. You grab the small one without really inquiring as to which one is for adults. You also did not heed, obviously, a gentle but pointed question, should you ride this ride? Now, Mr. Hargrove, these are the essence of your systems and protocols. Safety has to be first. The signs, a lifeguard at the top, someone to warn him, but the should you ride is, is a little soft when the result can be absolutely tragic. Here, Mr. and Mrs. Simmons, you have proven that Mr. Hargrove's employees were wrong, that first leg of the stool. That is, they violated their own systems and protocols by not stopping you, but I cannot ignore that you disregarded three safety measures that were put in place, so you bear some responsibility. Now, in this case, Mr. and Mrs. Simmons, you are suing for $200,000 in medical expenses, uh, $1.8 million in pain and suffering for a total of $2 million. I am not going to give you that because you are partially responsible. I am reducing your $2 million award sought 
to $1.5 million. I am going to find in your favor <laughs> and against Mr. Hargrove for $1.5 million. And this court is adjourned. <laughs> Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Terry Crouppen has to say. Serious injuries can have a devastating effect, not just on the injured victim, but also on their family. This is especially true when the person injured is the primary breadwinner. When they can't work, the paychecks stop, but the bills don't. This stress can be overwhelming. That's why lost wages are such a big part of personal injury settlement.